There it is, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Get Your Popcorn Ready Podcast. Today is your host, Hatch, is in the building. And this guy to my left. Yes, I guess. I am the host, Terrell Owens, a.k.a. T.O. Why is he screaming? I have building. no idea. We you are know, in the we're a little bit turned up today because right in the <laughs> building, you know him as Cool. Michael Cooper, Los Angeles Lakers in the building. Welcome, my guy. Thank Michael you guys for Jerome having me. Cooper. Hey, don't say that, T.O. You sound like my grandmother calling <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. Jerome, Jerome, Jerome in the house. Cooper, get in the house. Okay. Jerome, Jerome in the house. Yeah. No, thank you guys for having me. I'm really, really, thank really you. happy about it. We appreciate this. it, man. I know you got a busy schedule, right? We know you've been coaching for the last seven years. No, my years. schedule's I mean, not busy, Hatch. I'm a senior citizen now, and I do as ooh. less as possible. But oh, okay. I do coach. I coach you? over Culver City. Culver yeah. City. I get you over there. You yeah. coach everywhere, by the way. Just about everywhere. Right. That's one of the things I want to do because it's about giving giving back to the game of yeah. basketball. But right now, doing that, and I do as less as possible, and that's why I'm able to come here on the show today. You know what? Hatch had the nerve to ask me. We won five <laughs> championships. He goes, "Is that all you have?" So I had to go back into the history. I didn't, book I didn't and say it like no. that. I didn't I say it like that. It was about the total. In 1984, 1984, had by, had uh, James Worthy not gotten hurt and Bob McAdoo, we'd have beat the Celtics in '84 instead of '85. Right. So okay. that's seven, six. Six. Okay. In 1987, '88, we won back to back. In '89, Byron Scott and Magic Johnson tore their hands. Hamstring. Yep. And we would have beat, I don't call them the bad boys, I call them the bad kids. Because we would have whooped <laughs> the that ass there too then. So that would have been eight. Uh-huh. And then in 83, when they let Moses Malone headbutt Kareem into oblivion, and Moses made the prediction of fo fo fo, and I love Moses Malone. God bless his soul and everything. We'd have beat them. So we have had so, enough. So we you said to, you so almost like eight, had nine eight or nine yeah. championships. We went to the finals nine times but, and we but won it five But do you understand times. how many five is, though? Five is a lot. There's only a couple players that got more than you. I'm greedy, man. I wanted more. Yeah. But yeah. again, yes, it is a, a great amount. You know, I'm very blessed to get that with Kareem and Magic. The, of the Laker core, mm-hmm. we were the three that won all five. Okay, so you're the only three okay. players that was consistently on those five championships. On those champions. five championships. Really? I did yeah. not know that. So, so of those championships, which is the most memorable for you? And I mean, you, I know you guys have played the Celtics. Yeah, you know I mean, Danny Ainge, Robert Parrish, Larry Bird, and then you played. Oh, you're getting me fired up. I know. Don't miss Danny Ainge. Don't miss Danny Ainge. Put a ball in his hand. Detroit, those Detroit bad in kids. Hey, they, they, anyway. Okay. Isaiah Thomas <laughs> and the crew, Dennis Rodman, Sally. What is the most memorable championship of those? There's two, T.O. One was our first one, 1980. We were just having fun. Magic just got on the team. We were all playing. That sixth game, Kareem twisted his ankle, so we went to Philadelphia to play the great Dr. J, uh, Bobby Malone, 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 that whole group there. Chocolate Thunder, the late great Daryl Dawkins Dawkins. was on the team. Mm -hmm. And we just were playing. And that's when Magic had that phenomenal game, 42 points, 15 rebounds, 15 assists. But Mm. before that game, actually before we took off, one thing Magic says, when we got on the bus, I mean on the plane, we were all kind of nervous about heading to Philly. Magic gets on the bus with a big boom box and is playing Frankie Beverly, that's the golden time of day. I'll never forget that. Okay. Magic gets on (laughs) and he said, have no fear. Magic Johnson is here. here. And what? man, when he said that, that changed the whole tone. Really? We went to Philadelphia, and I say that one was a special one because we were just playing. Mm-hmm. And we lucked up. Well, now I say lucked up, but we won a championship that game. Okay. But the one that really means a lot, I'm from Los Angeles. Grew up here Grew in up Pasadena. Here. Mm-hmm. Watched the Celtics all through the 60s. Always beat Jerry West, Elgin Baylor, Wilt Chamberlain. The Lakers never been able to get over that hump. So our 85 championship was one that was kind of like for the city of Los Angeles. It mm-hmm. lifted a lot of weight off of Jerry West, who was our general manager at that time. Mm-hmm. And that one was really special because, again, it's the Boston Celtics. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you this, right? Magic yeah. having that type of leadership, that type of charisma at that age, Young right? Because in most professional locker rooms, they rarely take that much uh, advice, if you will, from a younger player, right? What did he have that made an older player say, I'm still going to listen to this young fellow? Well, Magic didn't come in talking. He let his game talk for him. And he came in trying to get us to understand how to play team basketball by including, including everybody with his assists. He never came in and did a lot of talking. Magic was more just a watcher, but he let his, his game play for him. And I think Kareem, who was our captain, wasn't real vocal. Right. So Magic kind of like slowly but surely kind of fit into that mold. Right. And 
it, it was great because, I mean, he worked well. Um, Magic was like a rock star, man. I mean, yeah, he just right. came in and did everything. Right, yeah. but that says a lot about Magic, as, as Hatch was alluding to, to have someone so young with a team full of veterans to come in and, and invoke that type of confidence because obviously, like as a point guard, you kind of have to watch and see what everybody's doing. You, 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 you're, you're the leader. But so see, Tino, that's for, it. He just included everybody. Right. As a point guard, like he said, he has the basketball, so he could have been selfish with it, right. but he chose to, to play with us. Right, but to get on that plane, it, was, it had to be something that he saw, he sensed that, as you said, you guys were tense, you guys were nervous. For him to get on that plane to have, really, the balls to, to do that, and just, like you said, you just, I mean, he just loosened everybody up, invoked that energy. You guys got off that plane, like, okay, this is our guy. We're going to ride with him. You know, T.O., I think, and you probably have played with players like this, too, uh, but Magic, I think, was made for that spot, for mm. that time. And I think for him to come on, remember the previous year before that, they had just beat Indiana State, Michigan State. Mm. So he understood right. what winning championships mm. was about. Right. Mm. Right. That was his love, his passion, and what a nickname. Magic, Magic right, you yeah. know, so he, he, I think he was born and a bred natural. for that actual mm -hmm. moment, and he took it and ran mm -hmm. with it. So you were saying, like, he's like a natural, like a, that natural-born yep. leader. And some people, like you said, some teams, they don't have that. You know, they just put, like, now you have guys with the C on the chest, you know, their uniforms. That don't earn it. Exactly. Mm, come you, on. You, they put you in that captain category, and you may not be ready for it. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's what it was. He was that way. And, again, I think that another mm -hmm. thing that helped is that Kareem was so secure in mm -hmm. his ability and his awareness of the game is that he allowed that young player to come in and do it without kind of like that old uh, analogy stepping on his toes. Mm -hmm. Green wasn't like that. So I think it was just a great situation. Can you imagine this? And I'm going to ask you your opinion. Yeah. What if Boston Celtics had drafted Magic Johnson mm. and the Lakers had gotten Bird? Mm -hmm. What do you think that rivalry would have been like? That is crazy. Man, what? I, I, it just doesn't I mean, fit because it's just this two cities. See, that's what I'm saying. They, they the were whole, fit for the whole per, situation. Wow. It was perfect, you know. And it, you don't want to bring racism in it, but right. that's what it was. Absolutely. You know, I don't Magic think was not going to fit no, in Boston. In Boston, and Larry could ahead. not have fitted out here. No. So that's why I no. say he was made for this situation. Both of them were. And you know what? I always say you can't say Larry Bird without saying Magic Johnson, and you can't say Magic Johnson without saying Larry Bird because they changed the whole dynamics but, of the NBA. Right. And that's why Boston went on to do the things that they did. Wow. Yeah, Boston. But they yeah. couldn't get over the Showtime funk. And that was something that never. Showtime. Now, when did, when did that name come about? Was, was that before you got there or when Magic no, got there? No, no. That was, uh, that, that Showtime developed like in 81, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like our battle cry. Yeah. Right. And T.O., you know, when things get tough in the huddle and something like that, somebody got to say something. Mm -hmm. And Magic yeah. would always say, yo, come on, it's showtime. And when he said that, we understood what it was about. It's right. time okay. for us to get busy, play defense. So that came from, from, the huddle, from the players' huddle, not from the huddle. media. It came from the players' huddle, okay. and they wow. kind of, like, filtered out. Of course, of and course. Pat Riley being the person he is. I took to, it red. Yeah. Absolutely. That's well, he should have, <laughs> too. Himself. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, showtime, that was like the ringing of the bell. Yeah. Like, whatever was it's going time. on, it's if go you guys time. was in a funk, or if y'all was on a roll, it was showtime. Yep. Now, now, again, I've always wanted to ask this question to uh, a Laker. How much did that crowd like play into you guys' energy? Because as we see it on TV and we see like, you know, it, it wasn't like that in NBA arenas in the 80s. It just wasn't. But LA was different at that time. I mean, it was like it was lights, a con camera. It was a rock it, it, it concert. Was, literally, it was like you guys were a living movie. And like I saw the highlights and see all the cheerleaders mm -hmm. and, and the stars, which obviously is still the same today, but it was like you guys set the blueprint for what we're seeing now. You know, you got to, and one thing, I, I, the one luxury I have as a former NBA, uh, player, I've only played for one owner. And so, so, Dr. Buss was Jesus. so special. You have to understand his vision for the whole concept of not just the NBA, well, not just the Lakers, but the mm -hmm. NBA. Mm -hmm. And he turned the whole thing around. He got the cable TV started with on TV. So mm -hmm. Dr. Buss wanted us to entertain the entertainers. Okay. Jack Nicholson, uh, the other actors and actresses that would Penny come, Marshall, people, anybody you know, yeah, like oh, that right. that would come, he wanted us to put on a show for them. So mm -hmm. that's what it was all about. Mm -hmm. Tio, I don't know, and I'm pretty sure you probably did. Did you ever get to the Forum Club? I, I, I did. And, and 
Why it, did he hesitate? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was a place to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was and, before and after. And the after, game. And, yeah. Hey, if you didn't, if you didn't get in there, <laughs> and man, you missed a treat. <laughs> you that? missed a treat because there's no telling who you may see in there. That was like mm-hmm. the, that's the who's who of the who's who. Well, that's what Dr. Bus wanted. So it mm. started from the court. Well, it started from up there, went down to the court, and then went back up there. It's like mm. kind of like uh, in the 80s, Studio 54. Right. Yeah. Everybody yeah. used to, oh, want to get to Studio 54. I never got a chance to go there because I wasn't on the elite cloud crowd. Right. So, but that's what it was all about. That whole atmosphere was about uh, excitement, entertainment, energy. And yes, we did feed off has to, to say we fed off of that energy that was there. Mm-hmm. And that's what it was all about. Right. Just play basketball, play showtime basketball, mm-hmm. and win. Right. What can you tell us? Like we got we got kids that never saw you play, but they can Google and see the history of the Los Angeles Lakers. Let 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 our viewers know. Like, wh- what is it like to be a star player with the Los Angeles Lakers? I mean, you guys while they're started, winning championships. Yeah, right? while it's, you're winning championships, because that everybody doesn't get to experience that. Right. I mean, you know, there's so many players that play the game, and they barely even sniff the playoffs. May barely even get one championship, but for you guys to you to win five and to be a part of something that I mean, 17 championships now, and and now going. I mean, you guys and Boston Celtics, you're like neck and neck. You guys are racing like that. Who's gonna get to 18 first? Mm. Well, Lakers will get to 18 first. I don't care how they look. You think now. so? Oh yeah. I don't think we, we suck now, but we're gonna be all yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I just I wanted to hear as long as I heard no, it. That's another Thank part. You. But to answer we'll your question to, to get started. <laughs> oh, we're gonna to come get back started. to that. Uh, playing with the Lakers and experiencing all of that was kind of like uh, when I grew up, we grew up in a neighborhood, and there was like maybe eight or nine guys in, in Pasadena, and we would want to come out to Los Angeles mm-hmm. and play, and you get all the boys together, okay? Mm-hmm. And you would come over here and play or go there to play. You go to the gym, and we all, it was like we were brothers. We mm-hmm. knew what we were going to do because we had been around each other so mm-hmm. much. So to actually play that, and the one thing I always say that the, probably the best advantage that I've ever had in the luxury of my career is I saw James Worthy and Magic Johnson mm-hmm. come into this league as pretty good college players. Mm-hmm. But I seen them lead this, lead this league as uh, Hall of Fame players. So mm-hmm. I saw the work they put in every single night. I saw the practice that they went through. I saw the things that they did. So for me to be part of that and to learn, I think that us playing against each other helped everybody individually. Mm-hmm. I think I like to think that me playing, Magic playing against me every day, you weren't going to see another better defensive player than me. So when right. you saw... Pippen and Jordan and, right. and Dennis Rodman and Dumars. He, had, he was going up against the best every yeah. day, yep. which iron, iron sharpens, sharpens iron. iron. Right. Come on. So now I'm playing Magic Johnson, one of the best players. So when I see Jordan, uh, George Gervin, the Iceman, mm-hmm. Larry Bird, I'm already set for those guys. Right. So it was fun to see that because we all developed in our own right. And again, you're not going to throw Kareem out of the book because you see one of the greatest players to ever play the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys ever have discussed about a GOAT greatest player of all times, and they still include all these guys now. Yeah. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the greatest player to ever play the game of basketball. Really? That's Why? <clears throat> he had an unstoppable shot, okay. and as a GOAT, if you're going to stop LeBron, Kobe, or Michael Jordan, what do you do? You double and triple team them. Mm-hmm. You make you them throw the ball. You can't, you can't double team Kareem. You can't Kareem double enjoyed them. the triple team, man, because you know what? He was such a great passer, mm-hmm. and he had a shot that was unblockable and unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And, so, and, and, and being that you, you mentioned, like you said, going up against Magic every day, James Worthy, a credit to what they were able to do on the court during the games because, like I said, you brought that tenacity, that defensive tenacity, five-time NBA first team. Like, that's, that says a lot in itself to what you prioritize with your game. Mm-hmm. What would you say is, was the best part of your game? Because, obviously, like I said, we know you can shoot. You know what I mean? You know, you had, you know, Magic doing the behind-the-back passes, doing this, no-look passes. What, it, what was it about Michael Cooper? What was the best part of your game? I think the best part of my game was the ability to fit in to the system, mm. uh, buying in to what we were going to do, sacrificing of self for the betterment of the team. Everybody knows I was a de- decent defensive player. Right. I could shoot the three. I eventually became better too. But I think the other part that was unknown is I became a good ball handler because I came gotcha. into the league, gotcha. T.O., as a three. I came in behind Jamal really? Wills. That's who I was supposed to play my okay. career. 
They traded Norm Nixon, so now I moved over to the two because we brought Byron Scott in, and now I was going to be like a two shooting guard. Mm -hmm. And I ended my career as a backup point guard. So wow. I went through all phases of the game. Did you work on your handles? Oh, I had to work on everything. Okay. I mean, I, when I moved to the shooting guard, I had forgotten about shooting, so I had to go out and shoot five, 600 shots a day right. uh, during the summertime. And then when I found out I was going to be a backup point, I had to work on my ball handling skills. So it all kind of like fit together for me right. because I was pretty well at all of them, but every season I had to change and, and be that chameleon that kind of morphed into something else. And that's what I enjoy. So, so let me ask you this about, about shooting a three, because you know, <clears throat> would your, head, your, your um, average points per game went up if you were playing on the NBA three now? Oh, for sure. The day's game because it's, it's short it's to you because you used to shoot like three feet behind exactly. the old these NBA. These guys can't shoot and all of them chuck it up. I got my share of <laughs> Like the great Bob McAdoo used to say, it can't go in if it don't go up. And you I was going to get, get my up. share of shot exactly. up there. So okay. uh, that was the fun part. But defense was always my forte. That was my strength. I knew that was what was going to keep me on the shoot team. And, and uh, I did it to the best of my ability. You're right. So shoot, let, me, shoot. let me ask you this, T.O. You know, you're a great wide receiver all the teams that you played on. And uh, when you came in, I had mentioned something to you, but I want you to tell the viewers what you would have done to me because this is what I would have done to you. Ooh. As a defensive back, cornerback, <laughs> and it's not about my height, it's about my ability to defend you, defend routes, defend speed, and defend when the ball's in the air. Because the big thing now in football is that back shoulder throw. You can't mm -hmm. stop a back shoulder throw. Have I could have stopped that. No, how? I would have got that. It has nothing to do with size, speed, arms. I got arms. long arms. Up. Anyway, T.O., <laughs> I think I would have put it on you. And uh, I think I would have put it on you every game we played. And what physical attributes you, made you, make no, you no, think let him, that? Let him finish. Are you, are you done? I'm done. Are you done? Yeah. What, what were you going to say? What this? physical attributes make you think that? <clears throat> that I could guard him? Yeah. It's my quickness. Uh, <laughs> let, 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 let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. I, I was a tough kid. Yeah. I, was, I think I could have handled the physicality. Yeah. Um, and I think just uh, my tenacity, my mental, Your mental. My mental toughness. That's what I'm trying to wait on. My mental on. toughness, okay. I think I would have been able to uh, mess with you, Jerry Rice. But for you, for sure. You, that, that all sounds good, They must Michael. have put some dope Michael. in this popcorn Michael. today. <laughs> Michael, all of that stuff. This dude right here. I can't have no more. <laughs> hey, Mike, hey. All, all of that sounds <laughs> good. So I knew, I'm very confident in who I was. I knew about my physique, my body. I knew what I did to prepare for the upcoming season. After the third season, I started to become, I became T.O. So I had a routine. Everywhere that I, every stadium I went, I put my headphones on or run around the field one time. I let everybody see exactly what's gonna be up under that uniform, under those pads, the helmet. So my muscles, I got muscles popping from everywhere. <laughs> but it was like, I was like a human, a human a Marvel comic, but I was just playing football. So I would have seen you somewhere, because I knew you probably would have come out just to kind of see what I had going on. So I would have just let you know what you was about to get into for four quarters. And I would have seen you, and I would have assessed I'm like, okay, I see what he got. So I would have went back in the locker room and told my coaches, coaches, he tried. If, <laughs> if I don't get at least <laughs> 10, <laughs> 10 targets, at least <laughs> he tried. At least 10 to 15 targets. We going at that somebody guy. Somebody needs to be fired. <laughs> we going at that guy. Because I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to put it on you. So Mike, I, I admire your confidence. But let me see, tell you see, something. So, <laughs> hey, I would have called your mama, your dad, and I would have told them, y'all better get y'all popcorn ready because I am about to put on a show. Cool. So the, what, what made you, Terrell Owens, what made you the, the, the receiver you became? Honestly, like I said, I wasn't that good. He was better than me coming out of college. I'm still better than him. <laughs> Google me. Anyway, uh, <laughs> when you think, I, I, I've always said, I always talk about my three pillars of success, and that's desire, dedication, and discipline. I always thought I had I, the love and the passion. I wanted to play basketball. We go back and forth all the time. We've had some basketball aficionados on here to, to really vouch for my basketball skills. They're <clears throat> lying to him. I mean, like, go ahead. we have some Hall of Famers <laughs> that have vouched for my, you know. Yeah. Um, so for me, I just knew whatever I put my mind to, mm -hmm. I felt like I could achieve it. I never yeah. thought I would play beyond the collegiate level. Um, but once I had that desire, obviously, to be a better receiver, like I say, it didn't, it didn't hurt at all to be playing with one of the greatest of all time. 
And it's just like you playing with some of the greatest mm-hmm. of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's going to enhance your ability. That's yeah. going to drive you and motivate you and inspire you. So that's what it did. I didn't want to take the opportunity of being from Alabama, small, small town, small city, going to a small school. I didn't want to take that for granted. And so being drafted in the third round, and I didn't really know nothing about football. So I just thought, okay, if you got drafted, like you were, you were on the team yeah. for yep. good. Yep. Like and then that. I started seeing guys that were drafted either before or around the First same time. First rounders getting cut. Get though. cut? Yeah. I was scared. I didn't want to go back home. There was nothing going on at home. Mm-hmm. But my dedication, that's the second D, and then my, my discipline. Mm-hmm. Once I started to eat and take care of my body, mm-hmm. and I saw and I, the benefits of that, and it, my, my game went on a trajectory. Right. If you look at my stats after my 99, my, the, year, the 99 season, which mm-hmm. is the year that I made the catch against Green Bay, I ascended, and I saw the benefits of what I was doing to take care of my body, studying, and just that hunger. I, I, I was scared to be mediocre. I was scared to be average. I had a strong distaste for being mediocre. And so that's what really drove me. So now even today, like I said, anything that I put my mind to, business ventures or whatever, I apply those three Ds, mm-hmm. desire, dedication, and discipline. Uh, and honestly, that's how I ended up into the Hall of Fame because honestly, I had no idea that in 96, being drafted to the Niners, that the, the end goal was going to be, you know, my bus, you know, sitting in Canton. Yep. And that's, again, sometimes when you think about, think about the athletes that are, you know, there's a number of good athletes, mm-hmm. but it's only a handful of great ones. Yep. Yeah, there's, yeah, very few. And you know, I, going back to that <clears throat> blasphemous comment you was making earlier about playing <laughs> DB, I, I, I got to thinking, have you ever... Tell my guards, I can guard you. you. No, you can't. <laughs> I got one leg and you can't guard me. Wow. Hey, I, have I, you ever played football? Hey, Mike, I got my money. I, I, want, I want to hear... No, I want to hear... Every, 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 every basketball, basketball player, player has a story of when the first time they played football. In the sixth grade... Uh, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Pop Warner. <laughs> now, listen, this is what happened. So we were getting ready. The, the, they had the Pop Warner tryouts. That's the little league yep. football. So me and our friends, we went to the park because this was a Saturday. Next Saturday, we're going to have tryouts and stuff. So we said, okay, everybody's getting ready. So we were out there playing. And one of the things I love doing is jumping in the air. Uh, one of my <laughs> favorite people. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> one of the, you know, my, uh, my favorite professional football player other than T.O. was Paul Warfield with oh, yeah. the Cleveland Number Browns. And he wore 42. What did he play, DB? Did he no, play receiver? Was, the yeah. receiver? You Wide see, receiver. You see, I told you, I, so, I just played it. <laughs> Jim Kelly was at running back. So anyway, mm-hmm. he used to just jump in the air so graceful and catch the ball. So they threw me a pass, man. I jumped up in the air. <laughs> and the next thing I know... Everybody was home, man. They were looking down. They said, Coop, you all right? <laughs> the quit, birds I going around your head. Day. I quit football yeah. that day. I yeah. said that was done, it for done, me. Done. So I was done. Not so, for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I used to play a little bit, but that was it. <laughs> you you got, you got to understand. I tell you, every NBA player <laughs> has that story. They played that one time. One time. That's it. They woke up 10 oh, minutes man. later. <laughs> the you birds is chirping. You want to hear they, my baseball story? Because my uh, uncle yeah, was a baseball yeah. player. Okay, so well, he man, got us ready for that. And again, they had his baseball. So I'm thinking, okay, I get out there. So I came up to bat. Now, they playing mm-hmm. overhand fastball. So I got up there, and my uncle was always telling me, because I was kind of scared of that in, impact, uh, mm, that, in, that, that, ball, heat, that, that heater. Ball, that heat. <laughs> I got up there, man, went to bat, and the guy hit me in the leg. T.U., I started crying. I dropped the bat, and I left, and that was it for baseball. You never that went back. Never went back. <laughs> okay, okay. So, again, I want to go back to your blasphemous <laughs> statement you made earlier. This is funny. This is funny. You this. can't play football without oh. being a tough guy. Oh, man. Now, I'm NBA, a tough now, guy. Now, I NBA can't tough pay that, yeah. is way oh. different than oh, NFL tough. Oh, I know tough. that. I know that. But oh, the one thing we got in the NBA is that we take tough falls without all them pads. But you... Mm-mm, mm-mm, oh, mm-mm. When y'all I'm fall good. in the NBA, y'all be crying and screaming. And don't it's... say y'all, cause I ain't never cry. You hit me, I'm gonna get up and be do ready. I, to hit do you. I got a camera? Do I got pictures of you flopping? Cause if you flop, you can't even have this conversation. If you're a flopper, flopper yep, yeah, I drew a foul. I'm taking all charges. You yeah, know, you but the flopping and taking charges is two total different things nowadays. Okay, I understand that. You know what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. Uh, no, you will never get me flopping. Okay. okay. Never get me. Okay. Cause I always play. I, I, I used to think I was a tough guy. Because you was for the NBA. You was a tough. You was a defend. You was tenacious, like you said. Right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, hurt, I'm hurt right now. I'm, I'm dead. Boy, you got you see me. him landing on his head. Boy, he got me. That boy, he got me in stitches over here. But yeah, I mean, speaking of tough guy, defensive, minded, Larry Bird said you were the best defender he faced. 
That's a that's that's, that's big a compliment. big compliment. What what do you attribute your defensive tenacity to? Like was that? And then I, I, another part of that too. I heard we talked about it earlier. You know, you said you you played that you played backup. You know, uh, to to the guys there in front of you. That's that's a role too that you had to be. You had to adopt and mm -hmm. adapt to, mm -hmm. and and it showed the unselfishness. You know, for the like you said, the betterment of the team to win that championship. Where does all of that come from? Well, that I think is from my upbringing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was raised by my grandmother, and she had ten kids, and we all had ten kids. So you had to share because there was a lot of miles there. And right. I think uh, we're very religious. Uh, so I, I think a little bit of that has come because I think you have to have selflessness over selfishness, mm -hmm. and that's from there. So when you take that into the real world, you still have to have humbleness about you. Mm -hmm. So I was always humble. But my thing was I didn't want to play for another team. When I got drafted by the Lakers, I did not want to play for another team. So for me... But, but, but I think all athletes said that. Like, really, what kept you in L.A.? Though? Because I, I said that, too, in Minnesota. And, of course, I free agency, I'm out. Again. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but most... Players end up leaving. After we won our first championship, mm -hmm. I could never see as a player. And it, it, by my 12th season in 1990, Dr. Buss took me out to dinner. Great dinner up in Beverly Hills, spent mm -hmm. like $3,000 on my wife and I and okay. his, his girl with him and stuff. So we were sitting there talking and he said, so I was like, okay, something is about this. So finally he finished, he goes, uh, Coop, I got three things for you. We're moving on, and it was at that time because everybody was getting older, and I was 37 at the time, and he said, uh, I got three things for you. We can trade you, mm. we can cut you, mm. or you can retire, and I have a job for you mm. if you want it. That's five awesome. year job for you. Okay. So I was like, and I, the way he said it, there was no arguing about it. So it wasn't the thing of, hey, Doc, I still got this in me, I got that. very tactful. Yeah, very tactful, but I knew what he meant. Right. So. As opposed to getting traded, I didn't want to get traded because all the things we had done, the championships and the banners up there, now I'm going to come back with the Boston Celtics or the San Antonio Spurs, yeah. and I have to look up there and you try to tear all that down. So I said, that was out of the question. Uh, I didn't want to be, uh, I, so I ended up retiring. Mm -hmm. And I went overseas for a year and played. And I remember coming back, and we talked about this earlier, had to, in 91 I came back and Chicago was winning. And they offered me the job there. And so Doc said, Coop, you ready? I said, yeah. So for me, mm. it wasn't about going to another team. I've never been one to, to play basketball. Yes, I love the money. Right. Money right. wasn't that like it is now. But I've never been a player to play for money. Mm -hmm. I played for the love of the game. Mm -hmm. And I played for the, the love of my teammates. Mm -hmm. So the things that I have accomplished with the Lakers, it wasn't about doing anything else. So that jersey is real. That purple and gold oh, jersey that's is real. real, right? Now you got Magic, who never went to another team. Yeah. Right? Kobe never went to another yeah. team. Now you got LeBron. You got James Worthy. Right, James but now Worthy you got w. LeBron. Mm -hmm. Now, do you consider him one of the best Lakers ever, even if he wins another one? Because he has been on so many different teams. I do consider him because I think when you're a Laker, you win a championship that puts you in that inner circle. Okay. Okay. But they haven't really won a real championship yet, but go ahead. That was a bubble. It was, it was a, a bubble. bubble. It was an I, I, and it's I, I tend to agree with that. It's an asterisk. Now you're starting to get me ruffled up. So. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, hey, you know, I don't really side with this guy on much, as you know. <laughs> hey, I'm just you giving you the facts. Your championships or championships. Coop, I don't Coop, care. Yep. Coop, I get it. I get all of that. You yep. know, since we've been here, I don't, it, I don't side with him. With yeah, that's much. a wiffle ball championship. <laughs> but <laughs> but that, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping on that bandwagon. Granted, it's a championship. Yeah, cool, cool. It's, yeah, it is what it is. But I got to jump on that bandwagon. That's that's that, that's a suspect championship. That and you, was the way of the world. It was different. It was something else. A pandemic was up on us, so that was what we had to play in. The Lakers got a championship. We got a banner up there to put us seventeen. The Lakers are, and LeBron is within that core. I, uh, a great player. So you think he's one? Like you, you put him in the same category as the Magic Kobe with Lakers jersey up in the rafters. I would. Yes, I would. Really? He helped us win a championship. That means everything. That story you just told. I don't believe it no more. Well, you know, no, no, I, no, I don't no, believe no, it no, no more. No, 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 listen. Now, it would be different if he was drafted by the Lakers. Right. But he came from somewhere else. But, yeah, but he's played with, so, he's played with what, four, well, four different times. And everywhere teams, he's been, he's won a championship. Right. So you got to give the guy his respect. So you're just saying you're going to give him props because he won championships, not because he's a great Laker. I want to know great Laker. I think he is a great Laker. I think he has the, he has the uh, possibility. Mm -hmm. If LeBron can hang in for... I'm going to say three years, but if he can hang in for a good two and he can't do that load management right. shit they're talking about, mm -hmm. sitting out because you're tired, mm -hmm. 
sports is about you playing basketball. That's what right. you right. get played. You know, you get you paid, paid to do. do. He gonna break Kareem's record. So, so I let really me, believe so, he let got me a ask, chance. Let me but ask he's gonna you have this. to be on the court to do it, and he's gonna have to. And he's putting up the numbers he is now. Oh, I think he can oh, do yeah. the same numbers next so year. So you know, the first year he got to LA, that they didn't go to the playoffs at all, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So la- then they won the the bubble, the bubble. Yeah, bubble championship. Then last year they got bounced in the first round. Yep. This year they might not even go to the playoffs. If they do, they're still That's getting bounced in the you first crazy round. Now. They're, they're, you crazy where, now. Where's the great they're, Lakers they're, they're coming have, in? They're they're crazy they now. may, they may, they may get to, to, to be. A, they're going to be the nine. They're going to be eight or nine. No, they're, they're going to do the same thing last year, and they lucked up and got in last year. That's what I'm saying. Against the Warriors. Look, well, against look, the Warriors. Look at his shoulders. Against just the Warriors. Look at him just, he's hey, struggling I, right here. Hey, hey, <laughs> y'all play hey, hating on a major they, level I, here today, boys. They just drop players on their haters. You twitching. They haters. over there twitching. They, they, they right. have, they, y'all might get in with the play-in this year. Y'all might get in with the play-in. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> hey, you know the trade deadline is coming up? Y'all got some choices to make. I mean, LeBron, LeBron has, and, and, and Vogel and Palinka, they've tried to manufacture a championship and it has not turned out. This is probably like the only, this is like the only blemish with, with, with LeBron doing this. This is not working out as everybody expected. Prior to the season, I'm you expecting guys, I said you the guys same were thing. paper champs. I said the oh, same sure. thing. That's what I said. But, you know, but prior to the season, mm-hmm. T.O., I said, wait, give the Lakers to after the All-Star, All-Star break. break. Oh. And, I, and that's even before the injuries. Now, obviously, mm-hmm. AD getting injured really throws a wrench in everything that He's makes back. it difficult. He's back. Okay. But well. listen, the Lakers are going to make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. My only problem with them is because the way that they're playing now and with AD, and if they can be healthy, I'm not afraid of them being in that eighth or seventh spot. I don't want them to be there. If they can get into that six, they can beat all them bums up there in that, that five, four, three. Mm-hmm. It's going to be hard to beat Golden State. It's going to be hard to beat Phoenix mm-hmm. if you're in that eighth spot, especially when you're going on the road. But they have to be healthy to beat those teams. No, no, okay, no. so let me ask you this. Y'all ain't since, got no shooters. Since you're talking about health. If that's such a viable thing for your team. Why are you going to get all older players? It makes no sense. First well, of all, let me say this first, T.O. First of all, Westbrook, as age, might be an older player, but he still has the body of a, a player three or four years younger because yeah, he still <clears throat> plays hard. Right. Carmelo Anthony hadn't played a lot up in Portland. So again, the minutes that he's going to play uh, wasn't going to be uh, right. too grueling on him. You get those players for the knowledge of the game, they understand. Now, the only problem with Westbrook, and I think he's the key to this, is that he hasn't conformed to team play yet. He's still mm-hmm. thinking that he is the, the, the key part of it, and he's not. Do you remember the Lakers playing Westbrook last year? The Lakers would sit back and let him shoot the ball. Let me tell you. Right. Boy. They 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 that, said no, I, they they treated Westbrook like he was not an all-star. Actually, I didn't know that. And that was the thing that surprised me. There's two things about him. One, I didn't know he couldn't shoot consistently. What? No, I did not, T.O., because every game I saw him was a TNT game or right, that the game highlight, was that, and yeah, the guy extremely what? well. <laughs> the second thing is I didn't know he threw the ball. He turned the ball over a lot. I mean, he is truly an I mean, apple turnover. Right, but, you, right, apple you got, turnover. right, you 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 got <sighs> greased over and, and and blossomed with all the triple doubles that every that he was getting every yes. night. Yeah, you're right. Like you were you've been hoodwinked, yeah. bamboozled, let him stray, run him up. But let, <laughs> me, let me say this. Let me say this. This is I'm a Laker fan to a degree. What degree? Before you go on, what zero <laughs> freezing? <laughs> Thirty-two. That, and that don't make you a true Laker, but where that makes you a Kobe Bryant fan. This is true. Hey, okay, that's that's that's, that's the Lakers. This is twenty-four <laughs> reasons. This is twenty-four reasons to be a Laker fan. You of all people should know. Don't you curse all these Los Angeles fans out? <laughs> I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Laker fan to a degree. So, but I will say this: something's going to happen. I don't I don't know if it's going to be something's going to shake up this core roster that they currently have before or after the All-Star break. And what I, what I, what, and we, we talked about and what you said you didn't know about Russell Westbrook is that he couldn't shoot. That is shooting, like I was about to allude to it, shooting is going to be the Lakers' Achilles Downfall. heel. Absolutely. Because you know when the play, regular Today's season. Today's NBA? You know, first of all, regular season basketball and playoff basketball is it's a whole yep. different animal. Yep. It's a half-court game, and yep. you're going to rely on a lot of shooting. Yep. And if that's coming from Russell, if they're banking on Russell Westbrook, no disrespect to him, but he knows. He has to understand that's a 
a big deficiency, deficiency in his game. And I saw the, 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 the clips that he was doing before when he announced that he was going to be a Laker. He got his buddies with the bouncing off. He dunking. <laughs> First of all, we know he can do all of that. He should that never. Don't matter, in though. the offseason, he should dunk a basketball. <laughs> no, he should. You I'm should, in, you no, should I'm, be from no, no, 25 feet no, no, deep. No, 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 I'm in your game. Bro, I'm saying that it's the most respectful way possible. Yeah. I love Westbrook. Yeah. I love his game. Yeah. But in order to evolve himself as a player, especially as he gets older, because he's not going to be able to jump and outrun no, people, no, out, out, he's going to have to improve his jump shot. That's just real, that's just real talk. Yeah. Me and me. Yeah, work on them weaknesses, man. Right. That's real talk. And I think that's what's going to hurt him in the long run, and that's why I think everybody feels like he's on the bubble, and he may be, like I said, he may be one of those guys that you have he's to give away. He's a tradable asset. Yep, and this is real talk, man. Well, again, I, I think it's going to be hard to trade him. I think his contract yes. is big. Because of the, the value of the end, Exactly, yes. and he doesn't. And the, the exchange and I, value I think with his, his attitude, because right. you can kind I'm of I'm not going to be no six-man no These team, Memphis and them teams, they're young, and they don't want anybody to come in and, and distract from that, but you got to remember, Westbrook was brought here to be the third or fourth option mm -hmm. in the offense. First is LeBron mm -hmm. or AD or however mm -hmm. you want to do it, but mm -hmm. LeBron and AD. Yep. And I think if there was supposed to be one, it was going to be Carmelo coming off the bench mm -hmm. and now Russ. I think what Russ still gives them is that attack mode. I think he gets in there. But what has also hurt Russ is that he's not doing it on the offensive end, and now his defense is suffering. Yeah. And, and that and, is and killing the team. And the Lakers, all, LeBron and, yeah. teams always need to be a good defense. Yeah, you have to be. Always. Right. And as we just mentioned, the pieces that they got rid of, KCP shooting, Cal Kuzma. Yep. Defensive shooting. Caruso. Caru Caruso. Alex Caruso yep. Yep. Over, lost him. Yep. That's a lot of underrated talent that is going to be exposed no, when it, it comes playoff time. Exposed. I think Monk has picked up a little slack. I, I he, like a him. A little bit. Uh, and that's how they're playing Stanley Johnson. Yeah. And that they're, kid there, man, I yes. like him because he yes. gives you that energy. Yeah. And Reeves, that kid Reeves coming off the bench. Yeah. I think he needs to get a little yeah. bit more in the I'm, offense. Horton so. Tucker, great. But you, know what? Horton, right? you, you never yeah. haven't really seen it. This is the one I think that's the, the, uh, the, the golden chip of everything. That kid, none that we got Kendrick from Miami Nunn, that hasn't Kendrick played Nunn, yet. Hasn't played, so I'm really kind of waiting to see because he can shoot. No, no, no. Like yes. point so guard all that hit. stuff you talking about is not championship ball, though. That's figuring it out. Right. That's maybe. That's the what it come. You only got four games to win or lose in the playoff race. And and and, and speaking of that. Time is not on your side. You're now banking on all of those pieces and things that you mentioned to jail yes, the within second that half of the season going into the playoffs. I don't care what both of y'all say. They're going to win a championship and they're going to get it done. They're you heard it out, ladies and gentlemen. Get it Michael Cooper on. Get your popcorn get ready. Get don't know is what. There's something in this. No drugs in y'all's water. No. No. <laughs> but we're not going to let you go just yet without <laughs> talking about the guy that's on my shirt. God rest his soul. The anniversary. Today is the anniversary. Was second year? Two year his, anniversary two year. of his passing. passing. Yeah. Give us something. Tell us something. Share something with, with our audience and myself and, 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 and Hatch about the great Kobe Bryant. Because I know I've had my, my experiences with him on and off the court. I mean, we've seen this, 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 this guy grow. You talk about going from a teenage kid that struggled in the, in the beginning. I, I watched games, air balls, all these things, and to grow into the father, the man that he became, and just the athlete that he became, the Hall of Famer that he is. Give us a little something, you know, as we obviously close here about the great Kobe Bryant. You know, Theo, that's still a sensitive subject man. to me, man. Yes. Because um, I remember the day where I was, where I was when mm -hmm. that happened, and you got that news, man. Uh, the only solace I get from that is that uh, Kobe was going to do what he loved doing, mm -hmm. basketball. Mm -hmm. And it's such a tragic incident. It was almost like yesterday, but yeah, it's been two mm -hmm. years. But you know what? Kobe was a certain kind of individual. Mm -hmm. And all of us Laker fans and fans <laughs> around the NBA got a chance, uh, around the world, got a chance to see a young man uh, become a, come, come from a teenager mm -hmm. into a... a Doting dad, mm -hmm. a very reliable husband, mm -hmm. uh, very good in the community. And to lose him at such an early, you know, the one thing we say is that his time up here was 
the time that he spent on earth, man, did he use it. I mean, mm-hmm. he really touched a lot of lives and did a lot of things. But the one thing that I always remember about Kobe was uh, the first time we had him in, and I was on the coaching staff in the early 90s, and uh, Jerry West was like, you know, before we were bringing players in, they were bringing kids in, you know, we're looking at them. And most of the time as coaches, we stand out there and just watch them shoot or pass to them. But this particular day, Jerry goes, Coop, bring your gear because I want you to work out. And I I didn't know who Kobe was, Mm -hmm. you know. (laughs) So when I got there, there was just two players down there shooting, and Kobe was over on the side just shooting. Mm -hmm. So Jerry goes, Coop, well, this kid, we're bringing down. We want you to deny him uh, pick and roll situations, keep him out of the low post, uh, keep him off the... And how the, old were you at this time? I, I was like, what, uh, 41, okay, something okay, like that, okay. 40. Grown man strength <laughs> at that I time. I wasn't big, Hatch. Come right. on, dude. <laughs> I, I knew what I was doing on that court. Right, so right, right. anyway, they bring him down and he introduced himself. Hey, Coop, uh, Kobe, hey, Kobe, how you doing? I'm like, okay, this young kid. I, and he's sizing me up. That's mm-hmm. the thing that kind of like caught me is he looked me up and down. So I'm like, okay. So we started out on the wing and I was just supposed to play him and it was probably the, work, the best workout I've ever had. Mm. And I, I mean, a lot of people say Kobe kicked my ass. Mm. I'm gonna agree, I think I got after his ass. Mm. Yeah. But the bottom line is we got through <laughs> the workout and when we finished that workout, and the one thing that amazed me is when we went into low post, they throwing the ball in low post. My job was kind of like make him go certain ways. Right. Mm-hmm. Shade one, one thing, way Yeah, him. one thing that Kobe could do, he always went the way he wanted to. Mm. And I, for me, that was kind of impressive because I thought I was, you know, again, I'm older, but right. I still had that knack of making you. Kobe always got the shot that he wanted. Now, mm. he didn't hit every shot, right. but he, he got, got the to shot. His spot. And he right. got to his spot. Right. Mm-hmm. And after that workout, and I mean, I was drenched with sweat, and I was kind of like, Jerry, you know what? I'm taking off the next week. Because that kid <laughs> wore you out. Kobe was elbowing oh and hitting me, and I'm like, oh my God, this guy hadn't felt that kind of pain since. Anyway, so. And Kobe, after that, what, 18? 17, 17, 17 at the time. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as we finished that workout, Kobe goes down, we all, as a coaching staff, we get over there, and Jerry West, i never forget this, he goes, that's the one. That's the one. Now, we still had guys we had to bring in, we had a couple more guards, a point guard, and some big guys. Right. Mm. Jerry said, that's the one. Mm. And, right. uh, you know, that to me is like, kind of my, my claim to fame with Kobe is that, I thought I gave him a pretty good workout, right. you know, because right. I still had a little umph in me, but mm-hmm. I'm glad we didn't go up and down, because right. it really right. killed me, but <laughs> right. that, that's the one thing that, that um, I keep with me, that memory, because again, wow. he was smiling, he was having fun. I never could, got up under his skin, and I was trying to hit him with my yeah. share of elbows, and he never got up under his skin. Wow. And you know, his attention to detail and his professionalism for a basketball player was mm-hmm. the amazing part. And I think Jerry and all the coaches saw that about I mean, Kobe. Yeah, just listening, listening to you describe this workout. The moment, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I completely just, Forgot that he's 17. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You're you're Literally. telling this story, and I'm thinking of the Kobe that I, the last Kobe that I saw within the last five, 10 years, which is amazing and remarkable in itself. And for this guy to to have the the basketball IQ and just the awareness, like you said, you tried to prevent him from doing certain things, but he got uncomfortable with the shot that he won. Yeah. That's that that's. Amazing. You don't find that in, in young kids or rookies. Yeah. What do you think it was about Kobe that made him who he was at that age? He's fearless. Mm-hmm. Fearless. That guy, you know, I think if you're going up against me and you knew it, and Kobe knew a little bit about me because I played against his dad, so he knew who I right. was. But just to know that I was a defensive <clears throat> player, Bain. a lot of kids would have been kind of like hesitant to do things. Yeah. Kobe wasn't about that. And that right. was the thing that really stood out to all of us. Mm-hmm. Right. But I was feeling it, and I could see it. And I, I think that was the unique part. And the fact that he wanted to make the NBA. And not right. just make the NBA. He, Kobe knew where he was going. Right, right. But you have to take certain steps to get there. And mm-hmm. he knew that I get to the NBA, I'm going to be a star. And there he is. knew he wanted to get there. And I honestly believe that he didn't want to play for any other team. Right. Yeah. Oh, and right. Just, that, he yeah, 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 we team. talked about it earlier about what if, you know, Magic had gone to Boston and, and, and Bird to the Lakers. Yeah. Y'all almost lost Kobe <laughs> to the Celtics. And now I've seen some clips and, and, and stories about what would, what if, what if that would have happened? That would have been so crazy. I think wherever Kobe Bryant went, he right. was going to be a great, great. player. Absolutely. He was going right. to be a great player. I don't think he would have 
had the stage or the limelight right. like this because right, right. L.A. was a perfect spot for him. But he was going to be a great player. Right, right, right. But I just don't... Th- I, he weren't supposed to go anywhere. Right, exactly. Hey, that's I didn't know that. Supposed to come I didn't to know LA. that either yep. until I started seeing some of the stories yep. about him, and they, they start reflecting back to when he, you know, came out of high school, Lord Marion, and did the workouts, and they showed him in a Boston Celtics workout. I'm like, what? Yeah. This happened? Yeah. Shame yeah. on you guys. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, he was Absolutely. doing what all them young kids right. doing, making around. You got to go, right, you know. Right, yeah. And again, exactly. I think his job was exactly. to get into the NBA, but Kobe was supposed to be. His dad played for the Lakers for a little bit, so he was supposed to be here. There it right. is. Well, shoot, be before here. we get out of here, give us your top five NBA players of all time. Again, no specific order. Doesn't have to. You can put yourself in there if you want to. Doesn't matter. But oh, just, I already even, know even up until today's game? Up until today's, today's game. game. Okay. Oh, I know Because you've put... seen it for 40-plus years. Three. Kareem, Abdul-Jabbar, number one. That's one. Absolutely. Abdul-Jabbar is number one. Yeah. Now it gets hard for me because there are so many great players. But uh, I got to go Magic Johnson. Okay, absolutely. I have to go uh, Bill Russell. I knew it. I have to go... Mm, Now you only got two left? Ooh, it's about to get hectic. Man, he said... I have to go... I have to go Kobe. I have to do Kobe. That was a hard one. And this is the hardest yeah. one. You because don't say, I'm kicking you out. I'm kicking you off the stage if you don't. You already know what it is. <laughs> I want to say Shaq. You're, you're not going to. <laughs> but I'm not going to no, say okay. Shaq. <laughs> but I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say Jerry West is my other one. Jerry West is my other one. Hey, have a say? Get your popcorn. <laughs> <pie cut him. laughs> but you know what? They're so, you can go John Havlicek. And go say you Shaq. are. No, you cannot. Who are you going to say? You got to put Michael Jordan there. Else ain't no, there's no list without Michael Jordan. There ain't no list without Michael Jordan. See, but, but listen, but listen. Touch it. Just touch it. Just touch it. Hatch, listen. Hatch, listen. Hatch, I'm allergic to him like I am to Celtics. No, that's why I say Kobe and Jordan. And it's, the only reason yeah. I picked Kobe is because he's a Laker. He's a Laker. But you, you're right. Jordan should be there. But because I, Honestly, mind. because without, without, without Jordan, there is no Kobe. True. Mm. True. There's no list without Jordan. Do you want to do your list over again for the, no. for the camera? No, no it's all no. good. So you want to do your so list you got, over So you got Kareem. Camera. Kareem. Bill Russell. Yep. Magic. Magic. I'm Kobe. I'm not even And, and, Bill, and, and uh, Bill Russell. Yeah. Well, you know, say, okay, I have, 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 have a check. Have a check with mine. But you got to remember, I go back to the 60s. So I saw, and I'm leaving out Elgin Baylor. I'm leaving out. You're leaving out Michael Jordan. That's who you're leaving out. Jordan, I, res- Jordan, I, my six I, res- man. I respect your top five. Jordan, but, Michael but Jordan's res- my sixth man. I respect your top five, but I lost respect for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Get your popcorn yeah. ready podcast. Chopping up with the L.A. Laker legend. Coop yeah. in the building. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yo, thank you, my brother. Oh. Yeah.